Hi everybody, it's Mr. Gerhard here, and we're going to learn how to factor polynomial expressions today. Um, we've already done some of this when we've worked with quadratics, but now we're going to get into cubics and quartics and other polynomials that we can factor, and it's all following about the same method. So let's get right into it. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to factor out a common monomial. So if there's something that we're looking for, or there's something that's common in all the terms, we're going to take that out and see what we end up with. After that, we're going to look and determine what type of polynomial it is. So is it a quadratic polynomial, which means that the highest exponent is 2, like x squared, or is it a cubic, where it's x cubed, or is it a quartic, where it's like x to the fourth? So we look and determine what the degree is. Based on that, we're going to take a couple different methods. Um, number one, if it's quadratic, <clears throat> We're going to factor by guessing and checking, magic number, box method, or we're going to look to see if it's a sum and dif or a sum or a difference, I should say, of perfect squares. If it's cubic, we're going to look and see is it a sum and difference of cubes? If there's two terms, if there's four terms, we're going to look to go and do a grouping method. And I'm going to go over both of those uh, momentarily. And then the last thing is if it's quartic, we're going to see, you know, is it two terms, like a difference of special squares, or if it's special quadratics, and, and we'll explain that as we get into it as well. Now, there's a flow chart here that I developed, and it kind of tells us where we go. So so we always start at the top of the flow chart, and the first thing we're going to look and see is, is there a common monomial? If there's a common monomial in everything, we're going to take that out. What's left over, we're going to look, and does it fall into the quadratic, the cubic, or the quartic column? quadratic, we're going to say if there's two terms, we're going to look to see are they perfect squares. If so, we can do the difference of squares formula. If it's not and there's three terms like we have here, we can just factor. And this is all simple factoring that we've done before. Um, if it's cubic and there's two terms, after we factor out the quantity, common monomial, then we're going to look to see sum and difference of cubes. And these formulas right here are the sum and difference of cubes formula, and we're going to go ahead and work with those a little bit. We're also going to do grouping, and that's what we're going to focus on the most, these two, because that's something new that we're going to see. And then finally, if it's a fourth degree polynomial, we're going to look for difference of special squares and then special factoring, which we'll also go over. So let's get right into it. we got a couple different polynomial expressions that we're going to factor. The first one here says x cubed minus 7x squared plus 10x. Now, in looking at this, the first thing that I see is that there's an x in each term. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that out. When I factor that out and I take an x away from x cubed, I now have x squared. When I factor an x out of this middle term, I now have negative 7x. And then when I factor an x out of the 10x, I have 10. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the x squared minus 7x plus 10, and that right there is um, pretty easy to do because we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 10, add together to give us negative 7, and so I'm going to say x minus 5 and x minus 2, and that's going to be factored completely. Once we get down to these linear factors, um, we can't do anything else. So it's just x, x minus 5, and x minus 2. That's factored completely. That's our final answer. When I look here at my next one, I see 3y to the fifth minus 75y cubed. Now 3 goes into 3, and 3 goes into 75, so I can take that out. Also, I got a y to the fifth and then y to the cubed, so I can take a y cubed out. And when I do that, I get y squared minus 25. Now you should realize that y squared and 25 are both perfect, cube, uh, perfect squares, and so we can use our difference of perfect squares method, that 3y cubed stays out front. y squared minus 25 factors the y minus 5 and y plus 5, and that's good enough for us. We're going to leave it right there, and that's our final answer. Now onto this last one, we got w cubed minus 27. w cubed minus 27, um, w cubed is a perfect cube, 27 is a perfect cube. 3 cubed is 27. And so it's a difference of cubes. And so I'm going to write out the formula above here. A minus B, or A cubed minus B cubed, equals A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. And so we have to identify what's A and what's B. Well, the way this is written, it's easy to identify A. A is like W. 
But it's not as easy to identify B because 27, well, 27 is not cubed. But if I were to write it as 3 cubed, now I see that this is like A and this is like B. And so I'm going to write it out A minus B, but instead of A and B, I'm going to use W and 3. So I'm going to write W minus 3, and that's taking the place of A minus B, times A squared. Well, instead of A, we got W, W squared plus w times 3 because a times b so w times 3 is 3w and then b squared which is 3 squared so that's just 9. Now normally we try and see can we factor this again but 95 percent of the time that's not going to be factorable so we're just going to leave it like that. So let's go on and uh, try a couple more. Here we get into a, a grouping example um, because we have a cubic, there's nothing common in all four terms. You could say, oh, well, there's a x squared common in those, or there's an x common in those three, but we can't take that out. And there's a 9 that goes into both of these, but we can't take that out of those either. So um, nothing common in all four terms. So we're going to use a grouping method. And by grouping, I mean group these two and group these two. Now, what's common in these two? Well, there's an x cubed and an x squared, so I'm going to say there's an x squared common in both. And when I take it out, I'm left with x plus 7 left over. Looking at these two, I see a negative 9x and a negative 63. I'm going to take out a negative 9. And in doing so, I'm going to leave myself with x plus 7. This and this have to match. If they don't, then we cannot do factoring by grouping. Okay, since they do match, what I can do is I can write that x plus 7 out front. And I can see what I have left. I have an x squared and a negative 9 left. And so that's what's going to be remaining in here, x squared minus 9. Now, x plus 7, that's linear. We're good with that. x squared minus 9, that is a difference of perfect squares. So I can then factor that one step further and say x plus 7 and x plus 3, x minus 3. Now we are completely factored. So we grouped like terms. We grouped the first two, grouped the last two, took out what was common of the first two, took out what was common in the second two, and then got down to here and kept factoring. All right, so let's go ahead and put these in um, factored form as well. I can't factor anything common out of g to the fourth or 625. And so now what I have to do is I have to think, all right, well, there's two terms here. And if I go back to my flow chart, two terms, I can say difference of perfect or difference of special squares. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, well, something squared minus something squared. It's just like difference of squares over here. So let's see if we can write this as something squared times something or minus something squared. So if I write that minus that, hmm, g squared squared is g to the fourth. So that works. And then what squared is 625? I'm going to grab my calculator real quickly. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Square root 625 is 25. All right, so that's perfect. So that means I can write in 25 here. So g squared squared is g to the fourth. 25 squared is 625. Now I have a difference of perfect squares. Difference of perfect squares you guys have done really well with. And that's going to be g squared minus 25. And then g squared plus 25. All right, here g squared and minus 25, that's again a difference of perfect squares, so I can say g plus 5 and g minus 5. Over here we have g squared plus 25. Now I can't really do anything with that because we're factoring over real numbers and this doesn't factor over real numbers because there's no two numbers that multiply together to give me positive 25 and add together to give me zero. So I'm just going to leave it like that and say g squared plus 25. If we're working with non-real numbers, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, we'll deal with that. But for right now, this is factored as completely as we can get. 
And then this last problem, okay, 4t to the 6th minus 20t to the 4th plus 24t squared. There's a lot of common things in there. 4 goes into 20, 4 and 24, so I'm going to take that out. Let me switch pens here. Um, so we got 4, and then t squared goes into t to the 6th, t to the 4th, and t squared. So I'm going to take a t squared out, and that's going to leave me with t to the 4th minus 5t squared plus 6. Now, this still looks kind of crazy, but if I think about it this way, let me go over here and we'll try this out. If I had t squared minus 5t plus 6, most of you, I think, could factor this into t minus 6 and t plus 1. So, difference between this and this is this is a t to the second and this is t to the fourth. This is a t, this is a t squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down here with my blue pen and I'm going to write 4t squared because that's just chilling out front. And then we got t squared and t squared. That gets me t to the fourth. And then let's use negative 6 and positive 1. See what happens. As I put that in there, let's think about checking this. t squared times t squared is t to the fourth. That's t squared. That's negative 6t squared. That would give me negative 5t squared. And negative 6 and 1 is, uh, oh, that doesn't work now, does it? Oh, man, I messed up. So we got to go back up here and we got to change this up because this isn't going to work. Let me erase that out. And it's not negative 6 and positive 1. What is it? It should be t minus 3 and t minus 2. There we go. That works a little bit better. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to erase these as well. Okay. And now we get t minus or t squared minus 3 and oops, t squared minus 2. This is now factored. Okay, if these were perfect squares, like if this were a 4 and this were a 9 or something, we could factor some more. But these can't be factored anymore, um, and so that's what our final answer would be. So I apologize about the mix-up there, but essentially what we're doing is we're looking to see this right here, especially when it goes to the 4th and then the 2nd and then the constant term, it's very similar to this setup here. And if we can factor this we can factor this. So I hope you learned a little something about um, factoring polynomials, and uh, good luck with that.